Matthew 14, 23, and 33. He said, after he had dismissed the multitudes, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was still there alone. But the boat was by this time out on the sea, many furlongs. And a furlong is one-eighth of a mile, and I'm reading in the Amplified Version. He says, uh, so it was about one-eighth, many miles uh, distance from the land. He said, and the boat was being beaten and tossed by the seas, for the wind was against them. And the Bible says, and in the fourth watch, and there is between three o'clock in the morning and six o'clock in the morning, uh, uh, a watch was like three hours uh, per, per day, and there were four watches, four times three, maybe 12. So, uh, and the fourth watch was between three o'clock or rather, uh, and six o'clock in the morning. And so, uh, so it's nighttime. Uh, and so, uh, and they see Jesus came to them, the Bible says, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they screamed out with fright. But instantly he spoke to them. Praise God. Instantly he spoke to them saying, take courage. He said, I am. Stop being afraid. Praise the Lord. Then Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water, and he came toward Jesus. But when he had perceived and felt the strong wind, he was frightened. As he began to seek, he cried out, Lord, save me from death. Instantly, Jesus reached out his hand and caught and held him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat knelt and worshiped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I want to talk today about stepping out of the boat. Tell somebody to get out the boat. Amen. Until we learn to step out of the boat of our comfort zone, we will never begin to experience the miracles that, and the wonders that God wants us to have. So our base scripture, though, where we've been teaching from, um, 1 Peter 1 and 7, it says that the trial of your faith or the testing of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So the Bible lets us know, amen, that there's a testing that goes along with our faith. And just like with Peter, uh, the boat represents our comfort zone. The boat represents what we are used to, where we don't want to, where we cannot really put to God what God would have us to put to him. It represents our comfort zone. And God wants us to go farther than our comfort zone. Can I get an amen, somebody? And so, in our getting an understanding with the Lord and how to operate, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so either we're going to walk in the area of, of faith with God or else we're going to walk with the area of flesh. So that's the reason why when Jesus first came along, amen, uh, and began to preach about the kingdom of heaven and began to preach in Matthew 6, telling us take no thought what we shall eat or what we shall drink or what we shall put on. He said, for the Father have, uh, knows that we have need of all of these things. So when he says take no thought, he's telling us not to be worried or fearful about the way we're going to learn how to operate in the kingdom of heaven. For he says in Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and it's what? Righteousness, and all these things will be added. So therefore, God is saying, if you will learn to do these things my way, which is different from your way, which is different from the world's way, you'll begin to experience miracles, and you'll begin to experience blessings 
that you never had before. And you don't have to worry about when it comes to me whether or not you're going to have everything you need to put on. Can I get an amen, somebody? Because God is going to ask us to do something, amen, that common sense is going to tell you not to do. God will tell, ask you to do something, amen, that the flesh will never tell you to do. And so the th difference is, is whether we're spiritually minded or whether we're carnally minded. Go with me to uh, Romans, the eighth chapter. Amen. Uh, beginning at the first verse, and many of us uh, know this very familiar passage of scripture. Praise God. Uh, hand me my Bible, son. Uh, Romans 8, therefore there is now what? No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ, has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, condemned sin in the flesh. So now, so now what God is actually talking about here is that, praise God, is that we are not supposed to be so fleshly and carnally man. We got to learn how to step out of the boat of our comfort zone. So let's continue to read this. He says that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And let me tell you something. The, 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 war, the flesh wars against the spirit. Come on, somebody. Amen. So therefore, you've got to have a whole, if you're going to walk in Christ and you want to experience miracles, if you want to learn how to be blessed, you've got to learn to do things God's way. And by learning to do things God's way, it's going to war against all that we grew up learning about. Because the flesh, amen, uh, uh, wants to take care of itself. The flesh does not want, the flesh says, if you get out of this boat, you're going to sink. But the Spirit says, my God never fails. The Spirit says God can do anything. The Spirit says, amen, that God, amen, can make the sun stand still. The Spirit said God can raise the, de the dead back to life again. The Spirit said God can heal your body and you never have to take a medicine. Come on, somebody. Amen. The Spirit says that God would do things in an extraordinary way. The Spirit says, amen, give, and it'll be given to you. The flesh says, uh -uh, you give to me and I'll be all right. And so the flesh and the Spirit wars against one another. And if we're going to walk with God, we've got to step out of the boat of our flesh. We've got to walk, amen, amen. Uh, 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 on the waters of life. Come on, somebody. Let, let's, let's continue to read. He said, for they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, which is Romans 8 and 5. He said, for they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. We have the basic needs of the flesh. We to eat, to drink, amen, to put on, to be clothed, amen, to have shelter, Amen. Mass laws, hierarchy of needs, amen, deals with the basic needs of the flesh and of the body. Praise the Lord. But God, amen, says something different. Look, let's read it again. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Somebody says, step out the boat. Because God is saying that we as Christians, we as believers in God are supposed to operate different from everybody else. Oh, come on, somebody. We're supposed to operate, amen, at another level. And once we learn God's way of doing things, then we're going to be able to glorify him, amen, by doing things that everybody else will say you're crazy. See, many people don't understand, amen, why we give. Many people don't understand why we pay tithes. And, and let me share something with you. Amen. When, and, and people say, well, you know, tithing is up under the law. Amen. Many people don't understand the, uh, God's way of doing things. 
when we look at mankind and when God first created mankind on the earth and there's Adam and Eve and they have two sons, Cain and Abel. Praise God. The first thing that we see with God dealing with Cain and Abel is God is requiring an offering. Why is that? There's no church. There's no pastor. There's no priest. Praise the Lord. But yet the first thing that God deals with man, amen, is that to bring an offering. My goodness. Well, and then God, amen, uh, was more pleased with, with Abel's offering than he was with Cain. Why? Because the Bible says Abel brought the first of his flock. <laughs> you see, but Cain brought, flock, brought an offering uh, uh, after he had got, you know, everything else together. And they said, well, Lord, I'll get something to you. Amen. But by Abel bringing the first of his flock, you don't know what any more coming. But, Lord, but the first I got, I'm putting it to you because you're the source of my supply. See, many people think that it's because he, he offered up, up, up a live stock, because he offered up sheep, because he offered up meat unto the Lord. That, that's not so. Amen. God in Leviticus required that they not only gave a meat offering, but also that they would give a grain offering. Amen. The Feast of Pentecost. Amen. That was a grain offering. That was a body and wheat offering. Praise the Lord. And so the feast of first fruit is a grain offering. And so it, it wasn't so much that it was grain, praise God, but he didn't give of the first that he had. He, he took care of the flesh before he operated with the spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so once you understand this about God, that God, amen, is a God that believes amen, in, in sowing, that God believes in, that it is his way of doing things and whatever you need, amen, sow that seed. Oh, y'all don't hear me. So that the power of your blessing is in your hands. Oh, can I get an amen, somebody? Somebody said, the power of my blessing is in my hands. So when we read, amen, Matthew 7 and 12, he said, therefore, whatever you need done, do it for somebody else. Praise the Lord. And sometimes, amen, you have to step out the boat because flesh and common sense are going to tell you, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Don't, I ain't giving this away. I'm not doing this. Praise the Lord. But the more we walk with the Lord and the more we understand the way of the Lord, the more, amen, we follow his precepts. The more we do what is pleasing in his sight. And let me tell you something. God, amen, is always going to give you the seed to sow. Oh, y'all. Oh, come on. When God talks about the, um, the three servants that he gave five talents to it, and one, another one, two, and another one, one. He was the one that gave the seed into their hands. He's the one that gave the God is never going to call you empty-handed. God is going to always give you something to work with, whether it's little or whether it is much. Whatever God gives you is going to be great enough for your deliverance. Oh, let me say this again. Whatever is in your hand is great enough for your deliverance. But the question is, is what are you doing with what God has placed in your hands? Many of us, amen, we're eating the seed instead of sowing the seed. In this time of pandemic, in this time of trouble in the world, it is a glorious opportunity for the body of Christ. It is now that we should be giving our best gifts unto the Lord. It is now that we, we need to be, amen, being a blessing to other people in our lives. It is a time now that we should stand up 
amen, and help the homeless, feed the hungry, clothe the naked. It is the best time because we're not like everybody else. We got a God on our side that's greater than anything else. And because we know that we got our God, hallelujah, we ain't worried about money. We're not worried about finances. We're not worried about what we have. All we want to do is say, Lord, use me, Lord, to be a blessing to somebody else. And the good news about us, we know that if we be a blessing, the Lord will make us a blessing. It's hard to bless somebody and you are not blessed yourself. Come on, can I get an amen? And God is looking for us to step out the boat. Tell somebody, step out the boat. Hallelujah. But once you step out the boat, you can't listen to everybody else. One of my great friends who's gone on to be with the Lord, Pastor Paul Coleman, amen, who, uh, who grew up in school together, amen. Praise God. He once said concerning this story that the reason why Paul, the reason why Peter began to sink because the other brothers was on the boat yelling, watch out for that way. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Bible said Peter looked up. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he looked at the wind. How many know you can't see the wind? Praise the Lord. And many of us, we're looking at the wind. The wind of people talking. The wind of people's opinions. Stop looking at the wind. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, where you are, that's where I want to be. How many know it was safer on the water with Jesus than it was on the boat? Hallelujah. Let me walk, Lord, where you walk. I have to get out of myself. I have to get out of the kind of mind. I have to follow the mind of Christ. I have to do what God say do. Somebody shout glory. Step out of the boat. It's boat stepping out time. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And let me tell you something. God wants us to come up higher. God is greater than Star Trek. He wants to take us where no man has gone before. God wants you to reach higher heights and deeper depths in him. God wants to bless us with abundance so that we can be a blessing. Glory be to God. And somebody say, and it is so. It is so. But when the Lord come, are you going to be of the ones that put yours out for a blessing? Or are you going to be the ones that bury your talent? Are you going to be the ones that have nothing to show for it? Lord, help me to help somebody. Lord, help me to be a blessing to somebody. And yes, the flesh is going to tell you, I wouldn't do this. The flesh is going to say, uh-uh, no, 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 no. No, you got to take care of home first. You got to take care of me first. Jesus said, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Hallelujah. This is the best time now, church, for us to be a blessing. It is the best time now for us to be a witness. Hallelujah. In the midst of this COVID, people are afraid to, to step out. Praise God. But what the world is doing is different from what the church is doing. Do you understand? Where the world is seeing loss, we are seeing opportunity. Hallelujah. Be safe. 
Wear your mask. Social distance. But reach out. Help somebody. Come on, can I get an amen, somebody? This is the time for our best giving in the church. Because God says that the gospel must first be published in all the world. People see the church shutting down. I don't see that. I see the churches opening up. More churches now are on Zoom, on Facebook, on all of these social medias than ever before now. The gospel is being published in all the world. People in Africa are calling me and telling me how much they appreciate the messages that I've been preaching. Appreciating our series we're doing on the African presence in the Bible. All the way from Africa. The gospel is spreading throughout the whole world. Hallelujah. In countries like China, where they have religious oppression, the thing about it now, they can't stop people from getting on their phones. The internet is worldwide now. They can reach out right there and, and come to our service right here all the way from China. And the gospel is being published. We're living in the last days. If you ever going to live right for the Lord, it's time to live right now. Jesus said, I'm coming again. He said, the gospel must first be published in all the world. He said, then the end shall come. I believe we're at that time. We're at the close of the sixth day. Praise God. The only day that remains is the millennium, the seventh day. The Lord said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He poured out his flesh. He poured out his spirit, rather, 2,000 years ago. A thousand years with the Lord says one day. We're in the last days of God's week. Praise the Lord. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you, O God, for this word on today. Lord, we thank you for those who are listening, O God, by airways and byways, Lord. We pray for the heart, O God, who has been pricked, Lord. They're saying, Lord, what can I do? What more can I do? Father, we ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, everyone that prays this prayer with me, that you bless them now. Father, Forgive us for our sins and for our transgressions. Lord, we believe that you died for us and rose again. And Lord, we receive you as our Lord and Savior. Jesus. Welcome to the World Redeemers Outreach Church. Located at 2200 Lamar in Memphis, Tennessee, 38114. You are always welcome to The Rock.